Welcome to another Gale Force Winds episode. I'm really excited about this one because we feel strongly that there's not enough information out there on this topic. We are going to be teaching you guys everything you need to know about properly anchoring at sandbars and islands and beaches and how not to be that person that is sitting in the sand when the tide goes out and everyone's helping you push your boat out. So we're going to be talking about tides, high tides, low tides, currents, and the type of anchor you should be using. My name is Emily and we have Amanda behind the camera. Welcome on our channel, Gale Force Winds. The first and very important concept that we're gonna talk about is the tide. So there's high tides and there's low tides. Now you can go online and go to saltwatertides.com. There's apps, I have an app, I believe it's called Tide Alert, which I really like, or you can use your machine. Our Garmin actually has a tide system in there and tells you what the tides are. Today we're at Snipes Key or Snipes Point and I knew that I needed to check the tides before I got here. I checked the tides guys before I even left the dock so I don't drive up and not know what's gonna happen. I drove up expecting what was gonna happen so I was prepared. Low tide today was at 9.30 a.m. So that means that the next low tide is gonna be around 12 hours after that, around 9.30, 10 o'clock p.m. And then the high tides are gonna be between those two. We got here at 9.30 in the morning, so I knew I was gonna be getting here at low tide. So when I pulled up, I knew that for the most part, I could pretty much anchor just about anywhere, knowing that the water was only gonna get deeper throughout the day. However, if I was coming at high tide, I would have to be cautious. I can't just, let's say it was high tide and I anchored really close to the beach or to the island or sandbar or wherever we're at, you have to realize because it was high tide when you anchored, the tide's gonna start going out. So if you're not constantly paying attention to it and moving your boat and you just left it there, eventually that water that your boat was sitting in is gonna be gone. What I wanna do right now is teach you guys how to read a tide chart so you're prepared when it's time to go to the sandbar. This app that I have is Tide Alert, which I really like because I can select my location, it shows me the moon, and I can scroll around and look from day to day and hour to hour. Let's start at Friday, April 16th. You can see that the first high tide of the day is at about 3.50 a.m. If we keep scrolling, we're gonna go to our first low tide of the day, which is at 9.50 a.m. As we keep scrolling, the next high tide is around 3 p.m. And then the final tide change of the day would be about 11.45 p.m. So you can see that the two low tides and the two high tides are about 12 or so hours apart, give or take, it's not exact. I got here right at 9.30 in the morning and I anchored as shallow as I could get my boat because I knew that the longer I sat, the water was just gonna keep coming up and rising and rising and rising all the way till about 3 p.m. Now, if I was gonna stay for an extra long day, I would definitely need to be aware of the fact that after three o'clock, the tide starts going back out. And you can see here that the second low tide of the day is a more drastic change than the first low tide of the day. So just keep in mind, guys, that the tides aren't gonna be the same year round or the same on each day. There's a lot of conditions that affect that. The next but extremely important concept to talk about is the anchor. You wanna be using the right type of anchor for the right conditions. So typically, let's just assume that your sandbar that you're going to is mostly sand. If it's rocky, I have something for you for that too. For the sand, we're gonna want a fortress anchor. This here is a fortress anchor. It's gonna dig into the sand. This is good for sandbars, beaches, islands, or anywhere where the ground is gonna be mushy or mucky. Let's say you're anchoring at a rocky bottom. Maybe the island you're going to has a lot of rocks, or maybe you're anchoring at a reef and you're trying to catch some snappers. You're gonna want a grapple anchor or a rock anchor just like this one here. We use both of these all the time. We keep them both on the boat. We don't have one or the other. We have all of them. In fact, we have two sand anchors and one rock anchor at all times because you never know when you're gonna lose an anchor, need a second one, or possibly need to change them out. Another important concept to understand is how deep a water you're in, and the way you're gonna to wanna to do that is use your depth finder. However, it's not that simple. You can't just look at your depth finder. Let's take a look at ours right now. You can see that ours is saying about 2.9, 2.8 feet, so it's about three feet of water. But we're not in three feet of water. The depth finder is reading three feet from it. 
So if my draft on my boat is about two feet and then it's reading three feet, I know I'm in five feet of water. Now we're gonna talk about the moment that you're actually driving up to the sandbar or the beach or the island and it's time to anchor. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna pay attention to the other boats that are around. That'll give you a lot of information. You're also gonna wanna try to figure out the shallowest part of the sandbar and the deepest part of the sandbar. A good trick for that is find all the flats boats and little boats. I guarantee you they're in the shallow water. Find all the big boats, they're in the deep water. And look at the other boats, figure out, okay, between these boats, where do I fit? But also remember that maybe these people that are at the sandbar, they might have to be aground as well. So just always listen to yourself and know your boat first. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is pay attention to the direction the boats are facing. So almost every boat here has their bows facing the island and their sterns facing away. That's gonna tell me that the current is pushing the boats away from the island. So you're gonna wanna make a mental note of that before you throw your anchor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wanna drive up to the island and I'm gonna wanna make sure my boat is set up in the position that I want it to be in when it's anchored. So what that means on this day is I'm gonna make sure my bow is facing the island, my stern is facing away, and I throw my anchor. This way, it's gonna be very easy. There's not gonna be a lot of room for my boat to twist around, spin around, and possibly hit another boat or end up in water that's too shallow for me. Another possible scenario that could happen is imagine if these boats' transoms were facing the island and their bows were facing towards the deep water. What you could do is you could drive up to the island, you'd wanna spin your boat around and then throw your anchor. So basically what you wanna do is just make sure you're throwing the anchor in the position that your boat is most likely going to be sitting once you're holding. One last thing I really wanna to touch on is if you decide you wanna use two anchors. Some people like to use two anchors because they like their boat being specifically facing a certain direction. I understand that, that's fine. You're at the sandbar to have fun but I'm gonna bring to light the fact that you must, 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 please put your bow anchor out first and then use the transom anchor to set up your boat how you would like it. Do not ever put your transom anchor in first and then your bow. I've seen people do it. They put their transom anchor and then they take a line from their bow and tie it to the mangrove trees. Guys, don't do it. That's something else. Do not tie up to mangrove trees or islands. That is not legal. Now we're gonna do it with you guys in real time. So right now my motors are actually still trimmed all the way down and that's because I'm still in deep water. And I'm familiar with the sandbar, I know where the deep water is and for the size of my boat, which is a 32 with a two and a half foot draft, I'm gonna stay in the deep water as long as I can until I can't go any further and I need to start inching into the shallow water. Something else you might notice is I'm idling. I'm not flying in, I don't wanna run aground, I don't wanna hit the sandbar very hard. So as I'm idling in, I'm paying attention. I'm looking at a couple of things. I'm watching the depth on my machine, which right now it's telling me six feet, we're great. I'm looking at the other boats. What direction are they facing? I'm also thinking, what was the tide? How much room do I need? Is it dead low? Is it dead high? If it's dead high, you really wanna be watching your boat and make sure you're not too high because that tide's gonna go out fast and you'll be aground. If it's dead low, you have a lot more forgiveness. You can probably get pretty shallow and the tide's just gonna come up and get deeper. Now, right now I'm looking at the boats in front of me and I'm seeing that all of them are facing with their bows kind of toward the island at this point and their transom, it's almost like most of them are actually parallel with the island. So that's gonna tell me that that's probably what the wind and current is gonna set my boat up to do. So when I go to anchor before I throw the anchor, I'm gonna want my boat in that position that I want it sitting in once it's anchored. I don't wanna come into the island this way, anchor, and then spin around and go that way. If I'm gonna be sitting this way, I'm gonna pull up, drop my anchor, and be right here. That way, you're not gonna be moving around and you're not gonna be putting the other boaters at risk. As you can see, I'm coming in nice and slow. I'm reading five feet on my depth machine. So that's getting shallower, four feet. Okay, so I'm gonna start slowing down. I'm gonna bump my boat in and out of gear, one throttle at a time. I'm also gonna trim up on the motors. Most likely, if your motors are trimmed all the way down, you're gonna probably hit your lower unit before you hit anything else in the sand. So that's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to trim up once you start getting into that shallow water. Now I only have one motor in a gear at a time. I'm just bumping them in and out of gear to control the boat, nice and slow. Right now, my depth machine is reading three feet. So as it's reading three feet, I still know I'm probably in around five feet of water because I have a two and a half foot draft. So we're just gonna keep traveling nice and slow. I don't wanna get too close to these boats. We're probably one of the bigger boats here, so I know that they can go more shallow than me. Okay guys, the last thing I wanna do is point out somebody else's mistakes, but here you can see that boat just dropped their anchor with their transom facing the opposite direction of how their boat's actually gonna sit. So it's gonna take a lot longer for their anchor to set. Their boat's gonna spin around. As you can see, their boat is actually even starting to drift 
over their anchor line. So that's what I meant by making sure your boat is in the position that it's going to be sitting in once the anchor is holding. Their boat is exactly in the opposite position of what it's going to be sitting in with the anchor. So they threw the anchor when the boat was not in position and now it's going to take a minute for the anchor to hold. Hopefully that made sense when I said that that boat was coming in and dropping their anchor when they really weren't in position to drop their anchor and now their boat's spinning around. They're not holding yet. They're just sitting here waiting and waiting for the wind to grab their boat, which is going to put the other boaters at risk and anybody that's swimming by that may not realize that they're not holding. It's also telling me keep some distance because I don't know how much line they put out. I don't know where their boat's going to finally sit. Now we're getting shallow enough that I'm now ready to throw my anchor. And I'm going to look at most of the boats in front of me. Their bow is that way, their transom is this way. So I'm going to do the same thing, bow this way, transom that way. Then we're going to throw the anchor and it'll be quick to set and I will be ready to go. Okay, Emily, go ahead and throw your anchor. There we go. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bump the boat in reverse for her to slow it down stop the boat because these boats don't have brakes. They don't stop when you're in neutral. They stop when you throw them in reverse for a quick second. Telling Emily to tie off to her cleat right there. And as you can see, we're pretty much already holding because we're in the same position as all the other boats are with the wind and current in our favor. And that other boat over there is still not really holding. They're still spinning around because they threw their anchor over when their boat really wasn't in a position to anchor. One last trick you might ask yourself is how do I know my anchor is holding and I'm set to go? A good key indicator is seeing that my boat is once again facing the same direction as all the other boats. I have the wind at my bow keeping me nice and streamlined and also my GPS speed is hitting zero knots. Yeah, it might bounce a little bit here and there and you might swing, but as long as it's coming back and hitting zero, you know you're holding. We hope this video helped you guys for the next time you go to a sandbar. Now you know the proper questions you should start asking yourself before you even end up at the sandbar. How are you gonna set up your boat? What kind of anchor are you gonna use? What kind of tide is it gonna be? All these questions we hope will help you guys moving forward the next time you go to a sandbar. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you get out there, have fun and stay safe.